A major shift in HIV prevention is underway, and it's happening faster than anyone expected. Just months after its approval in the United States and other high-income countries, breakthrough HIV prevention drug Lenacapavir is officially being rolled out in Eswatini and Zambia, two African countries with some of the highest HIV burdens in the world. In this video, we break down why Lenacapavir is being called a breakthrough HIV prevention solution. How only two injections per year can offer near complete protection and why global health organizations are racing to distribute millions of doses by 2028. Hello and welcome back to the HIVRNATestGuide.com YouTube channel, your trusted source for HIV testing with over 4,500 HIV testing labs across the United States. For more information, check the link in the description of this video or the bio section of our channel. So without further delay, let's start today's video. So there's this revolutionary new drug that can prevent HIV with just two shots a year. And in a rollout that's moving at lightning speed, it's already arriving in Africa. But here's the thing, the story of a scientific miracle, well, it's not as simple as it sounds. It's a story of incredible promise running headfirst into a pretty harsh reality. All right, let's get into it. Yeah, this quote from Mitchell Warren of the AIDS Vaccine Advocacy Coalition, it just perfectly sets the stage, right? I mean, the speed we're talking about, it's, it's almost unheard of in global health. So what is this thing? What's this innovation that's moving so fast? All right, first things first, let's talk about the breakthrough itself. You know, the science that has everyone so excited. So the drug's name is Lena Kapavir. And look, when a journal like Science calls something a breakthrough, you know it's a big deal. And for really good reason. We're talking about near complete protection against HIV infection. This isn't just a small step up from what we had before. No, this is a total potential game changer. And this, this is the magic number. Two. That's it. That's the key to the whole thing. Just two shots per year. Think about that for a second. Two injections a year for almost total protection. The impact of that is just, wow. Okay, so we've got this incredible drug. But honestly, what makes this whole story so wild is how fast it's all happening. Let's take a look at the timeline, because this is where it gets really interesting. Just look at this timeline. You've got FDA approval in the US in June. And by November, just five months later, the first doses are already arriving in Eswatini and Zambia. That is just unbelievably fast. And the goal? It's not small. They're aiming for at least 2 million doses by 2027, maybe 2028. That's some serious ambition. And of course, something this big doesn't just happen on its own. It's all being powered by this massive partnership between the public and private sectors. You've got the company that makes the drug, Gilead Sciences, teaming up with giants like the US State Department and the Global Fund. And their strategy? It's smart. It's laser focused. They're not trying to be everywhere at once. Instead, they're targeting 18 specific countries, the ones with the highest burden of HIV. And this chart really shows you why that makes so much sense. I mean, those 18 countries account for 70% of the entire global epidemic. The logic is simple, right? Go where you can make the biggest difference. So at this point, you're probably thinking, wow, this sounds perfect, right? You've got the miracle drug, the super fast rollout, the brilliant strategy. But this is where the story takes a turn. Because you see, having a revolutionary drug is one thing, but actually getting it to the people who need it, well, that's a whole other story. And here's the kicker. The biggest hurdle here isn't the science. It's not even the supply of the drug. Nope, it's the infrastructure. It's the health systems on the ground that are supposed to actually get these shots into people's arms. This really lays out the core problem, the big contradiction. On one hand, you have all this incredible promise we've been talking about, but on the other hand, you've got the peril, the reality, national health systems that are already struggling, programs that have been weakened by cuts, and you know, this history, this pattern of amazing life-saving products just sitting on shelves unused. And a huge part of the problem comes down to this. Foreign aid cuts have really damaged the exact systems that are needed to make this work. We're talking about the community programs, the local organizations, the very groups that are best at reaching people. They've been weakened, sometimes even defunded, right at the moment we need them the most. The timing is just terrible. And that brings us back to Mitchell Warren's warning. He's basically saying, hey, we've seen this movie before. This isn't just some theory, it's a real historical problem. You can invent the most amazing thing in the world, but if you haven't built the delivery system, if you can't get it to people, then it's all for nothing. It just sits in a storeroom. So, this is where we are. The promise meets reality. And the big question is, what happens now? 
What happens when this incredible scientific achievement smacks right into the hard, cold facts on the ground? And this table just lays it all out, crystal clear. The drug itself? Check. Developed and approved? The first shipments? On the way, already arriving. But the delivery programs? Weakened, defunded. And stuck right in the middle of all this are the people, just waiting. That supercar analogy from before? It's perfect. We've built this incredible machine, but the roads we need to drive it on are just falling apart. And that's where we'll leave it. The breakthrough is here. That part's done. The first incredible step has been taken. But you have to wonder if the hardest part is actually still to come. Maybe the real test isn't about whether we can invent these miracles. Maybe the real test is whether we've built a world that's actually ready to deliver them. So let's just start with this question. I want you to really think about it. What if you could prevent HIV with just two shots a year. I mean, until very recently, that would have sounded like something straight out of science fiction, right? Well, it's not a hypothetical anymore. It's real, and it has the power to protect millions of lives. So what is this miracle drug? It's called linacupavir. Basically, it's a long-acting injectable that gives you almost total protection against getting HIV. And let me be clear, this is not just another pill you have to remember to take every day. No, this is a completely different way of thinking about prevention. It is a massive, massive game changer. So let's dive into the science here and really get a grip on just how big of a deal this is. Because we're not talking about a small step forward. This is a giant leap. This is the number. This is the number that changes everything. Just... Two. Two shots a year. Now think about that compared to the current prevention methods, which usually mean taking a pill every single day. You can see right away why this is so incredibly transformative, not just for people, but for entire public health systems. And look, this isn't just hype. You don't have to take my word for it. The journal Science, one of the most respected scientific publications in the world, has called this a breakthrough. That really cements it as one of the most important things to happen in HIV prevention in a long, long time. Now, here's where it gets even more interesting. It's not just that the drug itself is incredible, it's the speed at which it's getting out into the world. Seriously, what we're seeing right now is a rolled out that experts are calling completely, totally unprecedented. Yeah, Mitchell Warren over at the AIDS Vaccine Advocacy Coalition, or AVAC, he put it perfectly. To see something this new, this innovative, get to the countries that are hit the hardest by HIV this quickly, it just doesn't happen. It's almost unheard of in global health. It could be a sign that things are finally starting to change in how we think about getting medicine to everyone. And when we say fast, we mean lightning fast. Check out this timeline. It gets approved by the FDA in the U.S. in June. And by November, that's just five months later, after all the other big international approvals and funding came through, the very first doses were actually arriving in Africa. A timeline like that is just, wow. So where did these first doses go? Well, they went to Eswatini and Zambia, 500 doses each. Now, these weren't just random picks. These are two of the countries that have been most devastated by the HIV epidemic. So getting the drug there first, that's a really important signal. But, okay, those first thousand doses... That's just a drop in the ocean, right? Of course, they're just the beginning. The real plan is so much bigger, so much more ambitious. We're talking about a global scale. And here's the big number, two million. That's the goal, to get at least two million doses to what are called high burden countries, basically the places with the highest rates of HIV by 2028. Now that is the kind of scale that can actually start to bend the curve of the epidemic. Now a goal that huge doesn't happen on its own. You need some heavy hitters. And that's what we have here. It's this major partnership between the company that makes the drug, Gilead Sciences, and the huge financial power of groups like the Global Fund and the U.S. State Department. But this is where the story takes a sharp turn, because that same expert, Mitchell Warren, gives us a pretty serious reality check. He warns that having a breakthrough drug is one thing, but actually getting it from a storeroom into the arms of the people who need it, that's a whole other ballgame. And this, right here, is the crux of the problem. So, yeah, let's talk about that reality check. The drug is here, the science is done, but it's landing right in the middle of a system that is already stretched to its absolute breaking point. You know, in a way, this miracle drug couldn't have shown up at a worst time. Experts are saying that the global AIDS response is facing some of the most dramatic challenges it's seen in years. That makes it a really, really tough environment to try and roll out a brand new and kind of complicated treatment. So why is the system so strained? 
Well, a big reason is that past cuts to foreign aid have really left their mark. They've weakened the exact health systems and community groups that we need to deliver a drug like lenacapavir. One source said the global health world is basically starting from a deficit when it comes to its ability to get this done. And this all comes down to something called the last mile challenge. You hear this a lot in global health. It's that final and honestly the hardest part of the whole journey, getting the medicine from the warehouse shelf into an actual person's body. And this is the fundamental conflict of the whole story, isn't it? On one hand, you have this beautiful, simple, powerful drug. And on the other hand, you have these weakened health systems, the tricky logistics of giving injections instead of pills, and just a long history of great ideas falling apart at this final stage. I mean, let's just walk through this gauntlet. Making the drug and getting it approved, that's step one. Then you have to actually distribute it, get it to all the clinics and communities, and finally, you have to administer it. Giving someone an injection requires a lot more training and infrastructure than just handing them a bottle of pills. It's a whole different level of complexity. So whose job is this anyway? Who handles that last mile? Well, mostly it's the national health ministries in each country. But here's the problem. For years, they've leaned on smaller community organizations for help. And those are the very groups that have seen their funding and their ability to operate get smaller and smaller. You know, if you wanted to visualize the problem, it might look something like this. Our scientific innovation is just off the charts, soaring higher and higher. We're creating these incredible tools. But our delivery infrastructure, the system we need to actually use those tools, it's lagging way, way behind. And that gap right there, that's the whole ballgame. That's the gap we have to close. Which really leaves us with this final critical question. The science is done. The innovation has arrived. But do we have the political and the financial will to actually build the systems we need to deliver on its incredible promise? The answer to that question is going to determine the fate of millions of people.